Hi YouTube, welcome back to part two of my lengthy favourite cosmetic and skincare products for 2015. I'd um, done with the Tom Ford, another um, big name that scored highly with favourites for me this year was definitely Guerlain. Um, I showed you my all-time favourite product in the last video. Um, my number two would have been this baby over here, which you heard me raving about in the early part of the year. This is part of the spring collection. And it was the Guerlain Poudre de Soie, the illuminating silk shimmer, which um, sold out really quickly in a lot of places. It is online, actually, now, certainly on some American sites. You can see um, it looks absolutely beautiful, even though I've used it a lot. Still, the embossed pattern is just starting to wear a little bit in the corners, but it's still very much there. Um, most people would use this, of course, as a highlighter, and it's a beautiful um, rose gold highlighter. If I swatch it, there you can see a bit more subtle than the Tom Ford one I, Mood Light I showed you in the last video. But I actually use this as an all-over uh, illuminating face powder instead of a mattifying powder most of the time. And it just gives me a nice glow, a bit like the um, uh, MAC uh, skin finishes, mineralized skin finishes. If you're familiar with those, a lot of people will be. Um, this obviously is more expensive. It's a little more... Um, glowing shall we say uh, but I absolutely love it uh, I do love the Guerlain silk powders um, some people may remember Cruel Gardenia from a few years ago very similar to this this is more rosy gold Cruel Gardenia is a bit kind of more pinky both beautiful powders um, and from the same release um, I loved this product the Meteorites Baby Glow which came out in the spring again you can still get it in the odd kind of uh, website rather than in store i did buy a backup i like it so much um definitely my favorite kind of bbcc type product although they didn't describe it as that they called it light revealing sheer makeup and that's what it is it's a very sheer um but glowing um tint for the skin and I love to wear this instead of foundation kind of all over it just evens out my skin texture a bit and if I still need I feel I need more coverage which I do around the nose and chin this has been a great favorite to wear in combination with um, the meteorites or a BB cream or even sometimes to top up foundation because I'd much prefer to wear a lighter foundation and then just cover up and you could use concealer. I um, use these, which are kind of hybrid. They are CMA. They're foundations, actually, um, a cream foundation. Uh, I'll try and find the website links for the UK and the US for getting these because they are difficult um, to get hold of. Uh, but I really um, rate. This is a kind of tester palette. And it's the um, lightest, second to lightest colours, I think. You get five different shades. Um, they all look very similar in the viewfinder, but they are um, very um, gradually um, graded. I, you can just about see. I've made more of an impression on this big one. Um, they're a very heavily pigmented, creamy foundation. If you use it all over the face, you do need to have um, good skin prep underneath. I would use it with Embryolis underneath. But as I say, I use this very effectively to touch up around the nose and the chin area. Uh, it's great to stick in the handbag as well for touch-ups on long days. So definitely, definitely uh, a favourite that I would repurchase. Not that I'm going to need to. I mean, I've used this a lot in the past year. I bought it early in the year. You can see the palettes getting um, a bit battered, but there's still a ton of product in there. It is so densely pigmented. Um, so, yeah, those two. I also tried a new under-eye um, concealer. This is Becca's Brightening Corrector. Uh, I like this. Uh, you can see I've used it quite a bit. It's um, a stickier product than the kind of pen products that you might use on the under eye area. So 
some people won't like that, but I find it tends to last a bit better than the pens. Um, I do like some of the pens. I like the uh, Maybelline Lumi pen, as you know, but I have been using this like it a lot. Um, back to Guerlain, uh, I loved this lipstick. When I got it out, I was surprised to see how little it had been used. It's the uh, Rouge Automatique. I think this was spring or summer. Um, it looks as if I've barely used it. I mean, I have too many lipsticks. I think what I love about this is the action of the um, the bullet. Uh, Guerlain lipstick packaging is amazing, but this is also a beautiful formula. Um, I like it a lot, and I'll definitely be looking at any more they bring out of that. A new lip product towards the end of the year. Um, someone on site uh, on here recommended this to me when I was talking about um, cream lipsticks and this is a lip oil by Yves Saint Laurent and uh, I'm really liking this a lot the last kind of month and a half two months I love the applicator and I love the smell which is just like their Rouge Volupt lipsticks um, there's a whole range of about five or six of these but they're all pretty colorless this is the most tinted and just gives you a slightly rosy tint but a really nice um, moisturizing product for the lips. I also, you know, rave about um, my favourite mascara being Le Volume by Chanel. I have found another one this year that I like. It's Givenchy Phenomenize. Phenomenon? Phenomena. Um, really difficult to get hold of in the UK. Not that many departments all seem to stock Givenchy. What I like about this, I think, is the applicator which is fantastic for giving you a kind of individual spiky lash look if you've got reasonably good lashes, which I have, she says, boasting. So it doesn't take over from my uh, all-time favourite Le Volume. Uh, it doesn't last quite as well on me as that. But I do like the look I get with this, which is definitely um, a more kind of unnatural spiky look for evenings. Um, so I do like that. It's a new favourite. Um, what else? Uh, an individual product from Bobby Brown. I don't buy much from Bobby these days, but um, this was something I read about on YouTube. Somebody recommended a very fair skinned girl this eyeshadow, which is Wheat um, 30, as a, a contouring product. There we go, a very kind of greyy look a completely matte eyeshadow um so it's very useful you can see it's not very pigmented which is why it works as a contour for someone as fair as i am and uh when i want to use a powder contour this is the one i go to and it also doubles up of course as a, a very neutral eyeshadow with a red lip sometimes so uh, i've used this a lot barely made a dent in it that's wheat from bobby brown um, Burberry brought out some contour products this year. Uh, I really, really liked this contour pen. What's it called? Mm, face contour. There we go. Effortless contouring pen, face and eyes. It's in two colours. I brought the lighter one, which is called medium, number one. Now, I seem to be the only person on the internet and blogs who likes this because I know a lot of people do not. But for me, it works. Uh, I just do one streak in the um, kind of below the cheek area and blend it out. Blends really easily. It's quite light on me, but a bit darker than the wheat. And it's just really easy because you just do a line and blend. And uh, I think it looks good, but I seem to be the only person who really likes that. I'll definitely be getting a backup of this. Um, and then I also tried their cream shadows this year. I think they came out this year, actually. I've only got one, gold copper in number 100. I keep saying I'm going to get some more, but I need to go in store to test them, and I haven't had time. You can see I've really hammered this in the couple of months I've had it. It's not very densely pigmented. Um, it's a kind of hybrid between the Tom Ford creams which are true true creams and the um illusion d'ombre of chanel which are these kind of cushioned products this one's midway between the two 
Um, definitely doesn't last as well as either of the other two, but very, very wearable. And uh, I tend to wear it, you know, with a bit of powder on top, but you could wear it on its own. Gorgeous Burberry packaging as ever. Speaking of packaging, the Galan Snow Globe meteorites sold out. They're not the best meteorites um, of I don't think they compare as well to past years, but it's just the gorgeous packaging. Definitely my award for packaging of the year. I love it. So it makes the favourites purely on that basis. I didn't buy a ton of Mac this year, and most of what I bought I ended up giving away or selling, not really liking very much. I'd be much better this year about getting rid within a few weeks if I can tell I'm not going to buy something. But going to do a separate video for the Ellie Goulding collection but I can tell you that this one's definitely going to be a favourite. I've worn it a ton over the holiday, really useful. Watch this space, that's the Halcyon days. And then good old Chanel, not the best year for Chanel I don't think um, but there were a few products that I really liked. I got into their Glossomers for the first time ever. I'm not a great lip gloss fan but these are so, so pretty, and I like the kind of thicker gloopiness of these. If I'm going to wear a lip gloss, these are the ones. And I've loved this seashell one I bought in the summer. I wear quite a lot. Um, and this berry one was part of the Rouge Noir collection with the beautiful gold shimmer. Of course, you don't see that on the lips, but so, so pretty. Um, good year for nail polishes from Chanel. Uh, not the best ever, but a couple of classics. Tenderly came out in the spring and I think is a phenomenal neutral. Um, I much prefer it to the famous particular as a, a neutral. It's a much more lilac toned taupe. Really, really flattering. Very pretty. Chanel always do reds well and this was my favourite of their reds. You can see there, I hope, the um, gold shimmer in Echo Sanguine in, uh, I think, the autumn that came out. And then at Christmas, Rose Fusion, a really beautiful chrome um, that looks completely different colours in different lights. I've already worn this quite a lot and I always get compliments for it. I would say um, that along with the blush I talked about are the ones that always draw compliments. Um, I put out a couple of blushes. Uh, a very, very pretty um, blush was the Camellia Rose in the spring. I know a lot of people couldn't bear to use. I have used mine. Um, it's a really pretty pink and uh, you can still see the camellias just about. And in the autumn they brought out quite a few. I think I bought three blushes. Golden Sun was one. This Alitsan was another. Quite similar um, kind of burnished blushes very um, flattering for fairer skinned ladies who like a bit of shimmer in their blush I um, have worn that a lot and continue to do so not a great year for the illusion dom in my opinion um, I expected to love the rouge noir and I have worn it it's nice but I thought actually um, I would pick this one which was rouge gorge um, really as part of the amazing kind of orange red makeup um, trend that we had this year um, that took me by surprise because you think that's going to be a really difficult colour to wear on your eyes and make you look extremely ill. In fact I have worn this quite a bit and it actually brings out the blue in blue eyes pretty well if you use a good liner um, to kind of pull it back from the um, sick girl look <laughs> so uh, strangely enough that was a, a kind of favorite this year of the orange um, look so there we go um, those were my favorites for 2015 and I can't wait for the spring collections coming out any day now I'll speak to you soon bye for now